Hi, welcome to Cloud Tech Bucket. In this video, we'll configure HP MS2060 storage and HP GL380 Gen 11 server and boot configuration. So that means in your server, you don't need any local disks. So you can install the operating system into the storage disks. So that's we are going to discuss on this video. So let me show you oh, my diagram for this solution. So I have the HBMS 2060 storage with four port HBA into the storage, and I have dual port HBA card into server. So what I did, I connected the um, server HBA to direct storage FC port <coughs> by the respected server is the port. so i have two server uh, and i connected these two server by directly into the storage as i don't have uh, so much of server and in future uh, maybe two to five years later i will need uh, more compute here so it's fine for me to connect the server directly but if in your environment if you have uh, uh, you know need to integrate multiple server with the storage and in, you have uh, um, higher compute need in uh, near future so in that case you will uh, <clears throat> have to configure you know, the server and storage by the SAM switch so as you can see into this diagram we have <clears throat> two SAM switch and two server and storage uh, so from the storage um, the FC connection will go to the cell switch one and two respectively. So as you can see, we have uh, the redundant connections for the controller level and also into the server level, we have <coughs> one ESB port connected to the cell switch one and another ESB port is connected to cell switch two. <coughs> so if you use the cell switch, then you need to configure the cell switch journey into the, um, into the cell switch uh, by server and storage receptive port. So <clears throat> that's we will discuss another another video. <clears throat> Before configuring the uh, you know actual uh, sand boot, so we have to follow this step. I, I just make sure these nodes so that we can follow and configure. So first line is uh, make sure your storage is up and initialized. That means your storage is powered on and the management IP address the pool or the volumes is configured for your storage and our step on is add server into storage by um, direct connections as i have showed in my diagram so we can connect like uh, these direct connections or we can connect by sand switch so both the design is supported and second is we will create um, the volumes for the server uh, which we will use for sand boot. It can be you know 40 gig, 100 gig, or 500 gig as per your need. And step three is we will assign those sand boot digs from storage to the server. And step four is uh, maybe I just made a mistake here. Um, I'll I'll just make the steps number correct. Okay, so step four is <clears throat> we have to configure the server ESB card. And on the server ESB card, we will have to select the specified path uh, for the sand boot. So let me show you here. As you can see, if I configure this server ESB card, so I will have to make sure which path will be uh, used to sand boot. So as you can see, uh, if I log into the server one and then HBA card port one, I have to make sure that this uh, my first controller, which is controller A and port one, is selected into the bias configurations. So that's I just make sure into this line. And step five is uh, we will save the uh, bias configuration settings and we will reboot the server. And after rebooting, we will um, select our specified operating system and we will uh, install the operating system. So that's our uh, discussion here. And into the second part, 
we will um, configure those things so you can you can see with me right, so as you can see into into my screen I have these uh, MS-206 storage and I added these uh, server 1 and server 2 here by uh, direct connections and into the volumes <coughs> I have created two volume on the volume 1 uh, server 1 and then server 2 I created 500 GB disk and I assign these two digs uh, on server 1 and server 2. So um, in this time I just selected the others um, but in your case if your operating system or any applications name you want to make sure you can use that. Um, so that's fine. <coughs> As you can see I have also copied the send uh, WWN and now I have logged into the server 1 ILO and i i have go to the um, system configurations then my specific uh, um, how do you say hd uh, card port so <clears throat> as you can see into the into the screen uh, uh, I, I need to make sure into the boot settings uh, the uh, wwn login adapter drivers all those things are <laughs> enabled um, and the boot um, and the you know secure boot login that can be disabled this time and after, <coughs> after configuring the uh, worldwide login and the um, and the boot configurations um, <coughs> so Okay, so in boot, I don't need to configure anything. Uh, on WWN database, I will get uh, the paths. So as you can see, on uh, SBA path uh, one, uh, which is directly connected with my storage, so that uh, uh, direct port uh, WWN number is showing. As you can see, it's starting with twenty one, and then on uh, the last is five seventy. And here as you can see it's the same number of, uh, of uh, WWN which is directly connected by this port so <clears throat> that means my first port of my server is VA is connected to on my storage controller a port 1 and the second port of my server uh, is VA port is connected to the storage controller B port 1 and for my second server it's the same like the secondary port of my storage controller A and secondary port of my storage controller B is connect connected respectively as per the diagram. Now I have uh, uh, set the configurations and inserted a virtual means media which is BM or vSphere 8 and I rebooted the server <coughs> and after reboot I <coughs> boot the server from the ISO file which is BM or vSphere uh, 8.0 update 3 so the server is booting um, just allow us a moment it will complete the boot process and after boot process uh, uh, we will select the storage disk which we will use for sign boot which is 500 GB we configured and into this server I have uh, two more disks which is local disk that is uh, uh, one terabyte each but I will not use this uh, local disk for uh, booting the server <coughs> let me show you that just uh, we are waiting to complete the boot process to be completed okay it's all uh, okay I got the screen we will press enter to continue then F11 to accept the terms and conditions it's scanning for the devices <coughs> 
Okay, so into the screen, as you can see, we have three digs. Uh, first two is uh, my local digs, and the third one, which is 465 per hour. So there is a gap like ZV and ZIV, that's fine. <coughs> so we'll select these uh, digs and we'll press enter to install the operating system into the storage digs. then press enter to accept the license <clears throat> and set a password for the ESXi uh, root credentials okay then I fill in again to install the operating system into my um, storage disk so this is uh, going to take a while um, because the ESXR is the very light operating system which is uh, 400 to 600 MB only so that's fine <clears throat> it will be completed real soon after completing the um, installation we will have to uh, remove the installation media and then reboot the server the operating system will be up and after that we will uh, see uh, as you can see when the message comes up here so we will <coughs> we will uh, you know detach the uh, iso file uh, which is uh, connected into my ilo uh, console now the server is rebooting so after coming back the server we will see uh, in my data network there is a dhcp enabled so it will get a ip for management and by that management ip we will log into the system server is coming back just a while yep it's almost there okay in my server 2 i install the operating system first and as you can see <clears throat> both the usb port is logged in into the storage site so that means during the power one the ASBA port will be connected to the storage so that's how uh, the ASBA uh, uh, is act within the server that means during the power on it connect the ASBA port up and then uh, connect my disk and then boot that operating system from the bricks so we got the IP address so is this 10 12 uh, 15 dot 11 that's my ESXi IP we got from DHCP um, server into my network <clears throat> and then uh, we'll provide the username and password and we will log into the operating system so uh, this operating system is actually installed into the storage disks so that's how we can configure the sand boot into HPM uh, storage storage and HP has um, their um, latest enterprise grade storage which is also supported the sandboarding uh, but before you purchase uh, the device you have to make sure uh, the quick spec of um, storage and server and the HP port which is supported thank you very much